Hi, I'm Phil Jordan, professional psychic and medium, and I'd like to share with you a few thoughts about psychic phenomenon, or people that call themselves psychics, and mediumship, people that call themselves mediums. Medium is a term used for a long time, probably since the mid-1800s or even before. And it's a person who stands between this world and the next and is able to communicate with the spirit world and relay messages back to those in their earthly pilgrimage. A psychic is a person who uses their mental capabilities and mental faculties to know things that may have happened, could be happening, or will happen in the future. Future events, of course, are called precognition or knowledge beforehand. Some people possess just psychic abilities, and some people possess just mediumship qualities. And then there are some people, like myself, that possess both psychic abilities, using their psychic mind to perceive things, and also have mediumship qualities in which they're able to perceive things from loved ones and entities in the spirit world. There's always been quite a controversy over the spirit phenomenon, but for me, it just proves what my Christian understanding is all about. That I too shall live after the change called death, that my physical being is only a vehicle for my spirit as it travels through this life, but that my spirit is eternal. The person that was created as myself, that dwells in this body, will dwell through eternity. There may be times that it may touch again in its earthly pilgrimage, commonly called reincarnation, which we will discuss at another time. For me, mediumship has always been an intrigue because it proves my faith, and my faith sort of proves what mediumship is all about. I think that to know that we live after the change called death takes away the fear of the event of death, and creates a better understanding that our bodies are mortal, but our spirit is immortal. There's a lot of people that are very skeptical about psychic phenomenon, as well they should be, because there's a lot of charlatans who speak in generalities and tell people that they have bad spirits attached to them and it will cost them a lot of money, but they can get rid of them things like that. Don't get involved with those charlatans. Don't demand proof, but wait till proof comes to you because it's so rewarding when it does come to you. I could relate hundreds of experiences where it's been proven to me that the spirit has lived beyond the change called death. I'd like to share with you a couple of those thoughts. Several years ago I was doing a house party with my psychic work and whenever a spirit comes to me I always relay the information that is given to me. It was a house party about an hour away from where I lived. I didn't know anyone in the group and didn't know their relationship one to the other. Usually it's a bunch of co-workers or friends that just get together to have an interesting evening of having me read on each of them by reading their auras and telling them things that are pertinent to them and if I see anything from spirit phenomenon sharing that with them. I was at this party and everyone sat in a semicircle. I sat where I could see everyone and as I talked to this one woman a man appeared behind her and he appeared just very much like any other human being, but yet I knew he had to be a spirit because he suddenly just materialized. He put his hand on this woman's shoulder and he said, 
tell her that I died under the pine tree, but not when the lightning hit it. And I thought that was an odd message, but I shared it with her. She started to cry as well as six other people in the room become very emotional. And when she got herself emotionally together, she shared a story with me. A few years before the party, her husband and son were out mowing the lawn. They saw a sudden storm coming up, so they got off their mower, sat under a large pine tree, and thought they would be out of the rain, away from the storm. And as they sat there, lightning hit the pine tree and rendered both of them unconscious. They were taken to the hospital and both fully recovered. About two years later, as her husband was out mowing the lawn, he didn't feel good, so he got off the mower, sat under the pine tree, was stricken with a coronary and died under the pine tree. So the message that was given to her was very valid information to her that he didn't die from the lightning strike, but he did die under the pine tree. I had no knowledge of any of these people or his death, and so it's pretty interesting to me that such information can come to us from an unknown source, or perhaps a known source. One of my most intriguing um, bits of spirit phenomenon occurred when I was doing a phone reading. I have people call from all over the country and all over the world that, to get phone readings, and I had a woman call me and I had done a reading for her, and at the end of the reading she said, I thought I would hear from my daughter. And just as she said that, I heard a young girl's voice say, Tell mom, I know she broke my fine gold chain necklace. And I suddenly knew that the girl had died from injuries, and that she needed to share with her mother that she was around her and that her love was very evident. Suddenly I smelled fresh roses, which I often smell when a spirit loved one is around. And the phone went silent for quite a while and I couldn't figure out whether she had hung up, whether she was disgusted with what I had to say, or just I was so wrong that she decided I had nothing valid to say to her. So finally, after about a two minute uh, silence, I said, are you there? And she came back on the phone and she was a bit weepy, trying to pull herself together. And she relayed a story to me that that morning, about two hours before she called for her phone reading, her husband had left for work and she locked all the doors in the house, which she always did after he left for work. And she had decided that maybe if she wore her daughter's necklace that she would uh, hear from her daughter. Her daughter, on the night of the accident, <clears throat> had forgotten to wear her fine gold chain necklace with a it had a lucky charm on it and, it, and her mother had found it on her dresser after the accident. So the mother decided she had a lucky charm, so before she put the necklace on, she was going to put her lucky charm on the fine gold chain necklace. And as she proceeded to do so, she broke the fine gold chain. She said to me, my grief has subsided considerably because I know my daughter is around me. The doors were locked. I was the only one in the house. And obviously, I wasn't alone that my daughter was with me. And I said, that's really what mediumship is all about. 
to take away the sting of death and to let us know that our loved ones are around us. I just this evening was at another house party where a girl asked me how her father was and I knew he was in spirit. I didn't know him or had no acquaintance with him. But I knew he was crossed over, that he was in the spirit world. And I said, well, I, he must have died of a chest problem as well as an intestinal problem. She says, yes, that's right. Um, I said, his lungs filled with fluid. She said, that's right. And he had an intestinal problem, and I think he died of colon cancer. And I heard a man immediately say, uh, ask her about the Christmas decoration or the Christmas ornament. So I said, is there something about a broken Christmas ornament or a Christmas ornament? And she went to, went on to say that the Christmas before her father died, he took her Christmas shopping and he insisted on buying her an ornament for her charm bracelet and he bought her a sled to put on her charm bracelet. The girl's mother was there and she says, I'm not sure that's what he's talking about. Because if you'll remember last Christmas, I was putting decorations on the tree and there was one for grandma and grandpa that the grandchildren had made. And I put mine on, secured it, and I put grandpa's on, secured that, and I turned away and suddenly I heard a crash as if something was cast to the floor. And it was the Christmas ornament that read Grandpa, that the grandchildren had given him Christmases before and was always on the tree. And I think that without any doubt in my mind, that was his way of letting the whole family know that he was with them for Christmas because Christmas was such an important family event. Those are only three stories of hundreds of stories that I have that have proven to me that we do live after the change called death. I think that's proven in biblical scripture with the appearance of Christ after his death and resurrection. And that's what the resurrection is all about. And Jesus was a human being, God incarnate in human form. And I think that he was showing us that our spirits do live forever and they come back to be around the people they love. Those experiences continue to amaze me even though I've been working with those experiences for 50 years. And each one is more proof to me that we do live after the change called death and helps to intimidate the fear of death and to intimate the love of God. So, those are just three stories that I want to share with you. Thank you.